Hi, everyone. I'm Sophia, Product Manager from Google Cloud. I'm here today to tell you about Cloud Asset Inventory. We all know by bringing workload to cloud, you're benefiting from its scalability, high performance, secureness, and cost efficiency. Yet, at the same time, admins, especially platform admins, secure admins, are facing never-before-seen challenges that were brought in by the large quantity of resources and data that can be easily created by developers. In fact, enterprises have millions of resources running on Google Cloud today. So how can you see all the things you have on cloud at the same time? How can you keep an eye on all the changes as they happen so you don't miss a threat? How do you answer questions that seem simple, but are actually challenging, like how many VMs do I have in my org? Who can change my billing accounts? Or what service account keys that are older than 60 days? I'm very excited to introduce your Cloud Asset Inventory that aim to solve all these challenges for you. As you can see here, Cloud Asset Inventory is a fully managed metadata service. So let's first address the elephant in the room. What is an asset? An asset can be a resource like a VM instance, a BigQuery table. It can also be a policy, like AM policy, org policy. It can also be VM runtime information, like system updates. So now let's talk about metadata. Metadata here means the configuration of the asset, not the actual customer content. For example, it is about the name, the size, creation time for the disk, but not the files that are written on the disks. It offers many inventory services on your entire GCP and Anthos environment, which makes it truly a one-stop shop. So you don't need to go to Compute Engine to find all your VMs and then go to Cloud Storage to see all your buckets, for example. And what is more convenient than that? It works at the organization, folder, and the project level with fine-grained IAM policy controls. So regardless of your permission level, you can always take a full advantage of it. Lastly, you can get up to 35 days of full change history from Cloud Asset Inventory. Now let's dive deeper into the features. First and foremost, you can get a snapshot of your entire inventory. You can use either the export or the lease service. The difference is, is that export is a long running operation, which will export your data to either a cloud storage bucket or a BigQuery table, which makes it easier for you to directly query and analyze data later. Lease API works just like any other lease API, except it supports a timestamp, where all the data will be included in the standard HTTP response in case you don't want to deal with the storage location. You can also get a full change history by either using the UI or API, which I'll demo later. Now, after getting full visibility of your entire inventory plus history, we also offer real-time notification feature for you to easily achieve continuous monitoring. It allows you to monitor assets and will send a pops up message when change occurs. You can define your criteria by asset name, asset type, or by org, folder, and project. You can even use cell condition. And by the way, cell is the expression language that created by Google. For example, you can say, notify me as soon as any file rules got changed in my org, or notify me only if I'm policy is changed to be open, or when a VM is deleted. Here's an example scenario. An admin wants to monitor and get notified when a Gmail account is added to an IAM policy. You first define your condition in a real-time feed using the code shown below. Now, if a malicious user adds his own Gmail account into the policy, Cloud Asset Inventory will trigger a Cloud pops up message right to you in real time. From there, you can define your own remediation actions. For example, you can write a Cloud function to reel back the change or send an email to project owners. The real-time monitoring capability, especially the condition support through cell, ensures that you won't miss any important changes and also filters out the noises so you can stay focused and keep your cost low. OK, now, if you're one of the policy admins or privacy admins who have to be on top of access grants, take care of access certificate, and keep tracking of all the changes across your whole org, you will be really excited to learn a powerful tool offered by Cloud Asset Inventory, I am Policy Analyzer. In a nutshell, it does deep and thorough analysis on IAM policies and related resources to help you answer the question, who can access what and why? For example, what service accounts can access my buckets that contain sensitive data? Or what access does this terminated employee still has? So what makes the tool powerful? Let me show you with an actual example. Who can change my firewall rules? 
This is one of the top questions Adam and you to answer and keep track to. Well, it turns out you have to peel through many layers to actually get to the full picture. Starting from the who part. Who can be a user, a group, or even a serious account? In the case of group, there can be multiple layers of groups, which we call nested groups. In case of a serious account, there can also be multiple layers of service accounts that can impersonate one another. Policy Analyzer can handle all of the above to give you a complete picture on the who part. Now let's look at what's needed for changing a firewall rule. Turns out three permissions, create, update, or delete, can all make changes to firewalls in some ways. Policy Analyzer is capable of mapping IAM roles to permissions for both curated roles and custom roles. At last, Let's look at the last part of the question, Project A. We all know IAM policies can be inherited, which requires you to not only look at IAM policy directly on Project A here, but also trace up along the hierarchy to the folders and the orgs above to make sure all the policies are analyzed. Luckily, Policy Analyzer analyzes resource and the policy hierarchy as well. It also analyzes IAM conditions and exports results to cloud storage buckets or BigQuery table. So here you go. You can see how much work the policy analyzer does for you behind the scene in order to provide a truly complete and comprehensive answer on who can access what and why. Now it's the demo time. As I mentioned earlier, let's take a quick look at the Cloud Asset Inventory Developer Console. The Cloud Asset Inventory Developer Console is located under the IEM and Admin tab. First, you can use the toggle on the top to switch between an org, folder, or project that would like to see your asset set. Once landed on the landing page, you will see an overview tab with automatically pre-populated dashboards for your deployment insights, also resource and IAM policy tabs for details about the assets. The first geograph shows you how your zonal and regional resources are located across the globe. You can also get to a table view of it. The next one shows how your VM instance counts have been changing over time. And the next view shows you the resource counts by services and asset types. You can also use the predefined filters on the left to focus only on assets you are interested in, like VM instances. You can see I have 17, and they all live in the US Central region. Click anywhere on the dashboard, it will take you to the corresponding resource and policy tab. You can see here all the filter options are carried over from the graph setting before, so let's uncheck them. Let's assume I want to search for certain VM instances, so I can first check on asset type here. And then I will further refine my search results by typing the search term into the search bar, like name contains the instance and then um, label key contains color group. And here are my results. I can also search by directly typing in the certain asset attribute values, like a known external IP, as that's what I found on the internet. I want to locate which VM it is. And here you go. I found my VM. I can then click on the instance to see the detail page. You can see the high-level summary first. Also, if Compute Engine VM Manager is enabled, you can see the runtime information as well, like OS version, kernel, running, or stopped. You can go to the Change History tab to see the full change history, up to 35 days. You can see here, all the timestamps shows the ones that had metadata change, and I can choose two timestamps to compare the differences. In this case, I can see that a label color group pink was removed between the two versions, as well as some other change. Next, you can go to the full metadata tab for all the details, like description, disk, service account, etc. And lastly, you can see the IAM policy that's attached to the resource in the IAM policy tab. That is all for today, and we encourage all of you to try it out. Check out the documentation and product pages down below, and we're looking forward to hearing from all of you. Thank you very much for watching.